there to the school trying to make contact with their students there 1900 students attend this school now we do want to say that this has gone all the way to the white house we just got word that President Biden has been briefed on this situation. Governor Kemp has responded saying he is dispatching uh, however many resources are necessary, including the FBI. FBI Atlanta confirming their involvement here in this investigation already along with Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens releasing a statement saying out of an abundance of caution, they have amped up security and police presence around APD uh, surrounding Atlanta public schools, giving them the sense of peace that they may be looking for, knowing that this has happened to, you know, their peers there in Winder. So we are looking at video that we got earlier from our chopper, uh, just showing all these students gathering there on the grounds, just you can't even imagine how how hard it is, you know, to mm -hmm. get all of these students back to their loved ones, just as far as they, you know, trying to get there, the streets are blocked off. So you gotta imagine how many cars are just responding here, trying to get their kids and just lay eyes on them mm -hmm. for the first time after getting that text or phone call, you know? Uh, Aisha, another question that came in about were there school resource officers inside the school? And we we don't know that for certain, but we can tell you that the Barrow County School District website shows at least two SROs are assigned to Appalachia High School. So we do know that they have uh, SROs that are assigned to the school. Um, I'm sure in the days and weeks ahead, we'll learn more about what was um, what support was inside the school when all of this happened at 1023 this morning? Yeah, we're just about, you know, two and a half hours removed from that first call coming in there uh, right at 1023, Cheryl. And so when you put it into perspective, I think the number one goal right now, these are all great questions that we are getting in from viewers. It's that these things are going to take so much mm -hmm. time and that school has to be 100 percent secure. The investigation will be extremely extensive as they start to uncover and peel off the layers to this scenario we came on air with only the fact that the school was possibly even locked down mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. from 11 15 to now almost 1 p.m we've evolved from this possible lockdown at Appalachie to we see one medical helicopter leaving the scene and now we understand from NBC News two are dead four injured so just look how the information continues to build here mm -hmm. as all of this comes in so as we get it we are bringing it to you within seconds right. we have reporters literally on the side handing us these press releases and mm -hmm. information as it comes in so while we do know the school resource officer aspect that's a pretty standard practice sure. around metro atlanta right but mm -hmm. we just can't confirm if they had one or not at the time and we understand that as these events happen in our community there is such a need and want for information yeah. but just also understand that first and foremost there is an investigation and mm -hmm. police have to tread very carefully to protect the investigation that moves forward so trying to balance the sharing of information which is really critical to the people involved and the people impacted and for the greater community who is feeling this and experiencing this right along with them but also having to protect a certain level of information as well as they think about an investigation moving forward. Again, they have shared one person is in custody and we're not certain if there are more that they are considering, but we know that one person will be a key for information moving forward. According to Northeast Georgia Medical Center, their public information officer, one patient has been transported to their facility in Barrow okay. and one patient is en route to their facility in Gainesville. That Gainesville location mm -hmm. is the level one trauma center. Center. Mm -hmm. So we can now sort of uh, put a place on the four injured. We have one at Grady. Right. We have one patient at Barrow at their facility. And then one patient is en route to the facility in Gainesville, which is a level one trauma center. Now, again, it's four injured. So we can uh, surely account for the location of the three. Of the three. But still not knowing the extent 
of the injuries here. That information uh, coming in from the Northeast Georgia Medical Center public mm -hmm. information officer. That's new information. There. But is significant that they chose to send two of these patients to level one trauma centers, yes. which are a great distance away. So that is a key piece of information, knowing that whatever they're dealing with, they felt the need to send them mm -hmm. to the two level one trauma centers closest. But one is that Northeast Medical Center is still a 30 miles from the high school. Grady is 40 miles from the high school. But again, if you're just joining us, we did see the medical helicopters on scene. They are the ones that would transport to those level one facilities so they can get the patients to the help as fast as possible. And we do want to just let you guys know that this situation has gone all the way up to the White House, all the way up to the FBI. And so while we don't have any word on a suspect, it is important to know that we have one suspect in custody, but no details on who this person is, age or anything of any of the people that have been injured here in this scenario. And so there are still so many questions out there, but we can say that the threat here appears to be over based on the body mm -hmm. language. We see another mother there getting their child from the school. People have had to park those cars and just get out and walk. Mm -hmm. They're calling their kids. Where can you meet mm. me? Where can we go? We see a student there oh with his shirt over his face, not knowing what that young man have ex has experienced, but glad to see him uh, with a loved one there. I mean, this is just absolutely gut wrenching mm. and just so hard to know. I'm a mom, I'm gonna call I, babies. I, what, exactly. these, what these babies have experienced and what they mm -hmm. witnessed, just the, just seeing your, your loved one for the first time, the grandmother that Molly spoke to, she was the grandma showing up. Mm -hmm. The son was already with the mom, but the whole village is showing up to show support to these kids and thinking about the ones who don't have anyone to come and get them either. You read my mind. Yeah. That's it. When I saw that, that young man, you know, walking across the field with presumably his mom. It's the first thing I thought of. You know, we, we are bringing you this information as journalists, yeah. but we are bringing you this information as parents and members of this community. And I know everyone watching is feeling it, feeling it today and uh, it, it does make an impact. And so we just wanna acknowledge that this, this is difficult mm -hmm. for the state and even people beyond the state watching and really thinking about those of you who know someone there and just um, feeling that for you together and thinking about these these kids these high school freshmen sophomore juniors and seniors who should be thinking about you know getting ready for a high school football game this weekend or taking a test and it, you know instead they're they're um, finding out more about what happened inside their school and the loss of people that they know and care about and uh, people in the hospital right now who are getting help and we and we hope will have full recoveries and then the, just the greater impact of, of experiencing this, whether you're physically harmed or not, there is a toll that it takes on, on everybody involved. We continue to hear more and more from our, our lawmakers and our legislators and our state and federal leaders. Uh, it is worth reiterating that FBI is there on the scene. They are helping coordinate because as you see this picture right here, you're seeing law enforcement vehicles from, you know, a 50 mile radius. It's like all hands on mm -hmm. deck. Everybody comes in in this moment and it is a coordinated effort to um, get all of that in motion in a way that is effective and protects the investigation and cares for the community moving forward. And unfortunately, a lot of those law enforcement protocols and procedures are in place because of school shootings that have happened in the years past where Mayor, that wasn't the case, and there was confusion in these times. And so those procedures put into place, unfortunately, you hope they never have to be.